I've been looking for ways to help people who don't solder do projects in electronics. And I've been looking for a liquid solder. Uh, and this is not the junk you buy at the hardware store that they claim you can solder gutters together with and all that. That's just basically a glue. I'm talking about stuff that actually makes an electrical connection. So this is one of them right here. I mentioned it briefly in another video. Uh, it comes with rather extensive instructions here. And yeah, and then I've got another kind that's like this. It's conductive pin. And I thought we'd just like run a couple beads. I got one centimeter marks from here to here on paper and plastic. And uh, if we lay down, you know, one centimeter of this stuff and then measure it with the uh, ohm meter and see how much resistance it has, uh, I thought that might be a useful experiment to see if these are any good. Okay, so let's do that. Um, this one is terribly expensive. It's supposed to be silver. And the, uh, the instructions say to twitch it to mix it and wow okay there's one centimeter and that's kind of a huge bead um, yeah it's very expensive and it doesn't have a very long shelf life so yeah that's another thing okay so and the other one the second one is this conductive pen now they say that they're good for after 10 minutes but you also have to read the fine print and it's 10 minutes of uh, with after 10 minutes of like with a heat gun now oh, this stuff doesn't want to come out okay i'm not sure this is going to be fair because this one's coming out very thin and the other one came out very thick so that will definitely affect resistance. Okay, so that's paper. Now let's do the plastic. If I just if I just ran this like a pen, I don't think enough would come out to do any good. Um, okay, so let's give it some time. I may help to dry it. Um, and then we'll come back and measure the resistance on this and see how practical it is for solder. It's been longer than 10 minutes. In fact, let me look at my watch. It's been, oh, 16 minutes since I did this. And that includes one minute of using the hair dryer on here on full heat. And the reason I used a hair dryer and not like some heat gun is because if I'm going to substitute some technique for soldering, I don't want to have, you know, people have to go out and buy special equipment that kind of defeats the purpose of it. Yeah, right now I can tell you that if we do this, this is not dry yet. So yeah, the copper colored one seems to be ready and we can test it. So over one centimeter on the plastic we get about 2.1 ohms that's that's not too terrible okay and this is the cheaper one of the two um, and on the paper it's 1.13 i can't really measure this because it's too squishy i mean it doesn't it doesn't do anything yeah so my experience with the silver is I got to wait hours and hours before it's actually uh, hard. So I will give it, I don't know, I will give it as much time as it takes for it to harden. And then we'll come back and we'll measure it and see how, uh, see how it's doing. While we're at it, let's do a little bit more realistic test. Uh, for crystal radios, I oftentimes solder wires onto these brass washers and we oftentimes solder wires together. They're just twisted. So we'll start out with the copper. Uh, we'll put that on the, on the uh, green wires and we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, the dispensing is not wonderful. Um, it does seem to be going into the windings of the wire, which is good.
Okay, so the two things we're going to be looking for is strength, uh, our strength, and the other one, of course, is conductivity. So now we'll try the silver one on the twisted wire. I don't anticipate this soaking in really well because this stuff is thick. And I think it's just going to stick to the outside. Um, I'll try to work it in there a little bit, but... Now this is actually a silver paste in some kind of a, like a glue base, but it comes, it comes with a hypodermic needle, but well, it's a joke because I tried to use the hypodermic needle and it shot off of there, which is actually really dangerous. Um, yeah, it shot off of there like some kind of a blow dart. Okay. So that didn't really go into the windings very well, but anyway, we'll see how that goes. Now let's do this. Um, okay. Yeah, almost got it over on the other side. Okay. Now we'll go on to the copper. Copper is much thinner, which makes it flow into spaces better. Um, but it also likes to run off. Okay, so we will set these aside and probably for a significant period of time. And then we will come back and give them a test for strength and conductivity. Well, checking back in on our experiment. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is still gummy. I added a thin layer up above because, uh, like about an hour later, because this stuff was still really tacky. And then I placed it out in the sunlight for 10 hours. And I just brought it inside and it is still, still not to the point where, uh, you know, it's, yeah, it's still gummy. So I guess we'll let it sit overnight. Uh, it's kind of strange for me because when I solder, I expect it to be done in, you know, a few seconds after you take the heat away, it's uh, starting to get hard. Okay. Well, so I guess we will, uh, again, we'll check back in tomorrow and, uh, hopefully after what 24 hours it will be uh, ready to test well it's been more than 24 hours it's been 27 hours let's see how we're doing we'll start with a copper and one point or point nine six nine five ohms for that here is the thick the thick one well it's still gooey hard to get an accurate measurement. It's all over the map. 40 some ohms, let's call it. Here's the thin one. Three point something ohms. Okay, not too terrible. So obviously the resistance goes down as it dries out. Let's try the plastic. Uh, 2 point something. 1.9. Okay, here's the thick one. Eight, eight, nine, ten, eleven, something. So not, not. And this one is then the, wow, six range. Okay, so that's that for those. Let's uh, test the resistance on the wires. I don't think we're going to see anything. So to give us a calibration, the leads themselves are like 0.4 something ohms. And we'll go like this and let it calm down. Yeah, it's a 0.4 something, so no real difference, no measurable difference. And ditto with this. So both the silver and the copper 
Um, basically, I can't really measure any difference. So the next thing would be to test how much strength it adds. And my guess there is it's going to add almost no strength. I have no great way of doing this, measuring it scientifically, but I'm just going to give it a poll and see if it makes any real difference. I mean, yeah, see, I can, I can see that it's just not, not really doing anything. Uh, if this were soldered, there's no way I could do what I'm doing right now. I'm just kind of unwrapping it. So as far as strength goes, it's not adding anything. The, that's the copper one. Let's try the same with a solar one. I don't think it's going to do any better. And yeah, it's, uh, well, actually this one may be adding a little bit. Yeah, I would say this adds, I don't know, a few percent uh, more strength to the joint. Uh, if anything, the only reason I would use this stuff on these kind of joints is to add perhaps some degree of, you know, corrosion resistance, coating it for, uh, you know, resistance to moisture, humidity, whatever, and keep the winding a little bit less uh, or more corrosion free rather. And we'll do the ohms test on the soldering of the uh, wires to the brass disc. And so we got about 0.51. I don't think we're going to get any significant change. Eh, call it 0 0.6 something, so hardly a uh, perfect connection. Well, all over the map. 0.5 something. So a little higher resistance than just, you know, than just a... Uh, short across the things, but uh, I guess not too terrible. I think a lot of it is because they're still clamped in place and yeah, so the clamp is holding a, a connection to it. However, I think that when I take this apart, it's basically just going to fall apart. Yeah. See, there's no, there's no strength. The uh, copper gave no strength and this, yeah. This is like, I don't know, like a very weak glue. Yeah, so um, for me, I, I really can't see a, uh, a huge use for this. I mean, uh, if you can't solder, yeah, I mean, for, yeah, for me personally, I don't think I'll use it. Uh, soldering is just too easy and it's faster, it's stronger, and it provides, you know, just a, a very sound electrical connection. These are both very expensive compared to regular solder. So anyway, that's it for these rather simple tests on the, these liquid solders. Hope you found that useful and interesting in your electronic experimentation.